All right, everybody, thank you again for joining us for Educators Day. Uh, we have two presentations left, and in this one, we have Matthew Chan from Autodesk, who you head up the whole Maya training, learning, teaching, learning, learning, channel. learning channel, and uh, so he's got tons of really cool stuff to share with us. And so with that, I will hand it over to Matthew Chan. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> So hi, I'm Matthew Chan. Uh, you might remember me from such educational videos as Intro to Maya, Lesson 3, Build a Rocket, and Why is this kitchen everywhere all of a sudden? Uh, I swear that's my one Simpsons joke for the rest of the presentation. Uh, but it is probably true that if you know me from anywhere, uh, it's probably from my work on the Maya Learning Channel where, uh, whoops, sorry. Uh, I teach over 200,000 users how to use Maya. Uh, however, I've actually been working on Maya quite a bit longer than that. Uh, when I first joined Autodesk so many years ago, I was just an intern working on learning material that looked a lot like this. Then when I came back as a full-time employee, I found myself working on an online system like this. And then, of course, I eventually found myself managing the YouTube channel. So suffice to say that I'm pretty experienced when it comes to teaching, at least when it comes to 3D. Which is why I'm very excited to show you this new, a new in-software learning resource we recently developed uh, that you can add to your bag of learning tricks today. Uh, but first, I'll briefly go over the process of how we arrived and developed it before, most importantly, demonstrating how you can uh, adapt or sort of use and adapt it to your own curriculums. Because if there's one thing I've learned in my time, it's that uh, audiences' tastes are always evolving. Uh, while it was once just accepted that going to a specialized art school and learning from fixed textbooks was the only way to learn 3D, the modern era user kind of expects a variety of learning materials available to cater to their particular learning style. Uh, even when it comes to videos, which has sort of become the de facto at-home learning method these days, uh, users don't want to go searching around in a sea of content to find what they need. Uh, not only do they want that content curated and delivered straight to them, but their time is important, meaning attention spans are shorter than ever. In fact, uh, our YouTube analytics shows that you have less than a minute to capture their imagination before they move on, possibly taking that all-important subscription with it. Students nowadays come from the era of iPad apps and video games. They expect to be fed what they need to know, when they need to know it, and even more importantly, they expect to be actively engaged at every step throughout the process. Nobody knows this better than you all. Uh, but one thing people outside of your profession might not know is that you all actually have it doubly hard. Because you've actually got two jobs. First, you're trying to teach the industry that is computer graphics. And second, you're trying to teach the tool that is Maya. To the uninitiated, these might appear to be the same thing, but you don't need me to tell you that they're not. In fact, all too often, teaching a complex software package like Maya is actually a barrier for reaching more interesting concepts. The faster you can get over this, the faster you can get to all that other good stuff. And historically, we haven't exactly been great at helping you do that, given that this was our onboarding experience for a long time. Uh, and it's not like we were totally oblivious to it either. Uh, in fact, we began researching the problem as far back as 2018 uh, with a pretty robust set of user tests where we sat a bunch of users down, uh, some of them completely new to 3D, others who were actually proficient in other software, and asked them to try Maya for the first time. What we learned wasn't exactly shocking. Uh, basically, it boiled down to two things. Uh, first, Maya is a very complex tool with too many options thrown at the user. And B, 3D itself is a relatively unintuitive topic. The problem was, in combination, it made the software almost impenetrable, as you can see by some of the quotes here. In fact, most of the subjects were ready to write off the entire field of CG after one brief first impression. So to try and combat this, we first tested a number of more traditional prototypes, from splash screens and guided tours to short one-minute videos, which some of you might recall Maya actually had at one time. Uh, each of these had some limited success. On the plus side, we did get users to successfully engage with the program. Uh, some people even managed to create simple models that they were relatively happy with. 
But that progress was just way too slow and not very engaging. Uh, for example, these two scenes that you see here on the left uh, took users an entire hour to make. Even video, which is a much more accepted learning format by today's standards, had a lot of issues. Uh, users constantly playing and rewinding while having to also context switch from a player back to Maya ended up in more confusion than anything else. And to be honest, the dry presentation and short video length meant that we couldn't even teach them very much anyway. Uh, think about this. Even though each video was only a minute, not one of the users got through a set of six. At some point, every single one of them became bored and began just aimlessly clicking around the UI. And if any of you know anything about Maya, you know how far that will get you. <laughs> and that's not even to mention the upkeep on our side required to, to uh, upkeep the, the bundled videos. Uh, every time the UI is updated, the videos would need to be refilmed. Most importantly, by the end of these one-hour sessions, not a single user felt comfortable with even just navigating the viewport. So what did we learn from all this? OK, so that's not the only thing that we learned from all this. But teaching 3D is a uniquely tricky task. On the one hand, it's extremely complex and highly technical with a bunch of different sub-professions and tools specific to those sub-professions. You can, and people have, built entire curriculums around just the math of ray tracing, for example. But on the other hand, 3D is also extremely artistic and requires a certain nuance that's hard to pin down. In fact, it's usually the art side of things that gets young people in the field the most, whether they're being inspired by their favorite films, TV shows, YouTube creators, or most commonly these days, video games. So that got us thinking, if these are the things inspiring the vast majority of Maya's users, why aren't we taking inspiration from them as well? So with some more prototyping and testing, we eventually arrived here. So if you've used a more recent version of Maya, you might already be familiar with MayaBot here, who we've positioned as a sort of digital tu tutor for new Maya users. Uh, before anyone panics, though, this is not our version of Clippy uh, or anything like that. Uh, if anything, it's really just a spokesperson for the actual new learning feature in Maya, which is interactive tutorials. So interactive tutorials is our way of gamifying the education process in Maya. Uh, they borrow a lot from modern video game tutorials by allowing users, in context, to perform common tasks using Maya's toolset. So for example, in the basics tutorial that I'm showing you here, uh, that comes bundled with the software, we teach the user how to use the viewport keys as a way of tumbling, following, and viewing MayaBot and its surrounding environment, before challenging them to a game of hide and seek. And as you can see here, the software actually reacts to what the user is doing, just like a game. But at its heart, these are just regular Maya scene files with regular Maya assets living in them. We just add scripts to show, hide, or animate specific elements based on what we want to teach. Uh, you could just as easily design a similar tutorial with nothing but a series of straightforward steps listed on the screen. But the importance of all that window dressing can't actually be overstated. Uh, MayaBot, the city, the hide and seek game, and most importantly, the humor all give users something to connect to, uh, which is all a video game really, is really, if you think about it, a series of increasingly complex tasks wrapped in an objective-based scenario. In fact, near the end of this 10-minute introductory tutorial, uh, we, even have, we even teach the users how to stack some crates and what could possibly be more video gamey than that. Most critically, though, uh, enabling this kind of learning experience allowed us to avoid many of those previous pitfalls we saw in our research. So because the tutorial exists in the interface itself, users don't need to constantly switch between a video player and Maya. And because the tutorial only proceeds when they do the right thing, there's no constant rewinding or second guessing if they did what they were supposed to do. Meanwhile, the interactions with MayaBot keep things lively and reinforce that friendly mentor vibe that teachers like you provide even when you aren't around. And because everything lives in the UI and runs on background Python calls, a tutorial like this is much less likely to go stale than a video since it just overlays over top of whatever the current UI is. In fact, there's even a way to place things like text boxes relative to individual UI elements. So they'll follow them around automatically if that widget is moved in a future release. 
Uh, not to mention the scene file itself actually doubles as a rich sample scene that a student can dissect and study too. For example, uh, Mayabot here uh, is a professionally modeled and shaded, uh, fully rigged HIK character, which of course means that it's one-click mocap compatible. Uh, it's also equipped with mashed facial expressions driven by shape deformers that are fully customizable, as well as an assortment of substance painter made textures, standard surface shaders, and proper topology. And that's just Mayabot. The scene file itself also includes examples of both motion captured and hand animated assets, baked and real time lighting, alembic caches, time slider bookmarks, and more. But of course, none of this matters if users don't enjoy this learning experience more than before. So how did they react? Well, judging by the next set of tests that we ran, pretty darn good. Uh, I actually really wish that uh, we could have shown some of the reaction videos that we got from users uh, testing our prototype. Unfortunately, I can't do the terms of use that we signed. But suffice to say that it was a complete turnaround, as you can see by, by some of these quotes. Uh, people went from being on the verge of giving up to feeling quickly at home in Maya's viewport and actively wanting to learn more. Uh, and since the tutorials have gone live, we've seen that sentiment echoed in comments on the area website or on YouTube, as well as in the rating system built right into the tutorial itself. Uh, fun fact, over 95% of people who clicked the in-game, or sorry, in-tutorial rating uh, gave it a thumbs up. Uh, so basically anyone who actually tries one of our interactive tutorials seems to enjoy it. Uh, but that's not to say that everything has gone perfectly either. While usage of the Intro to Basics tutorial has been great since it's bundled with the software and displayed right in our home screen, it's kind of less commonly known that we have even more interactive tutorial content available on the AREA website. For the 2022.1 release alone, we also did an intro to modeling, an intro to animation, an intro to lighting and shading tutorial that are all designed as follow-ups to that basic tutorial, continuing Mayabot's story. Not only that, but I've been steadily releasing new interactive tutorials on a variety of subjects, including some newer Maya features like Blue Pencil here. Uh, these are all license-free, distributable resources that are available to you uh, and your students at no charge. And while I certainly don't expect them to replace the Maya portions of your curriculums, the goal here is to at least reduce some of the burden you carry each semester. Uh, my hope is that you can at least find something among these to act as either helpful supplementary exercises or prerequisite material. But what if you don't find something immediately relevant to what you're teaching among the existing tutorials? Well, you can build your own. So as much as interactive tutorials are my baby and control, the controlling parent in me would love to monopolize designing and building them all, I'm also just one person. Uh, this is where I can use the help of bright educational types like yourselves. Uh, you see, the framework for building interactive tutorials is actually completely open. Uh, we added this early in the design process because there were a few AAA studios uh, that were actually interested in creating interactive tutorials for, of their own internally, either to onboard new artists or to document their own custom plugins or processes. Granted, the tutorial creation process initially wasn't the easiest. Uh, it involved going into the node editor and duplicating and connecting script nodes and was just generally kind of painful to work with. But even so, there was clearly interest because I did two videos on the learning channel on it and both of them tracked well above average. So given that ease of use seemed to be the main stumbling block, I'm happy to report that we now have an app for that. So this is the interactive tutorial creator app that recently went out in Maya 2023's bonus tools. I know it looks a little rough. Uh, if we're going to be honest, I originally coded it as an internal tool to make my life easier. Uh, but what it lacks for in beauty, it makes up for in functionality by taking all those messy manual node connections and duplications and packing them into a much more usable graphical user interface. So now you can do things like create new steps, edit and move text around, manage the time slider to animate elements in your tutorial, and detect and react to user input all by clicking a few buttons. 
but for some more, but for the more technically minded people or for those who are just open to learning, uh, I kept all the same Python script functionality available from the original creation method uh, for even more power and versatility. And like I said, this app is available for free in Maya's bonus tools with complete documentation. My dream is that one day with the help of educators like yourselves, uh, we can build up a repository of interactive tutorials that each of us can then draw from. Uh, with enough community resources like this for students to use as homework, the burden of teaching a complex tool like Maya in the classroom would be lightened for all of us, freeing up time to teach other more advanced computer graphics concepts. And to make this possible today, literally right after this presentation, I'll be releasing a brand new video on the Maya Learning Channel that demonstrates in detail how to use this tool. Uh, I, I hope you'll consider carving out uh, 10 minutes either when you get back to your hotel or between sessions or even when you get home to have a look and imagine how these tutorials can fit in your respective curriculums. Uh, because this was, a uh, this was a feature specifically made for educators like yourselves, designed by a fellow educator. Uh, yet another tool to add to your teaching arsenal. So that's it for me. Uh, but if you're looking for even more information on this stuff, as well as what Jonah talked about in the talk before mine, um, you can check out these resources. Thank you. <laughs>